Okay, hi guys. Uh, my name is Alex Nemish. I've been using Scala for quite some time. Um, and I love uh, different uh, programming languages. Um, and I was impressed with the uh, uh, macro system introduced in uh, such a language called Numero, or I'm not sure how it's spelled. Uh, and I was very excited when I um, when I saw that uh, Eugene Bromaco introduced a quite similar approach for Scala compiler. And I was wondering what could possibly be done with this tool. That's actually that's actually how JScala project was started. Uh, is there uh, someone who already seen uh, me presenting JScala before? <laughs> oh, that's 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 cool because it's going to be quite similar. <laughs> so, okay. So, what is JScala? Uh, previously, we. Uh, experienced a presentation by Otto about Scala.js. So that's pretty much similar uh, library, but done in a totally different way. Uh, so it's a set of uh, markers and uh, marker annotations, which um, almost literally convert Scala code into JavaScript. So the library contains actually uh, macros and macro annotations. Also, uh, it contains a JavaScript AST, abstract and extreme uh, pretty printer, which you can well you can uh, create this AST manually or uh, create from the Scala code, and you can manipulate those trees uh, if you like, and then pretty print to a string, which is actually what the actual point of this library. Also, we have this feature, which also I've mentioned before, it's a TypeScript import. So if you have a library, JavaScript library, which has a TypeScript annotation file, you can import it and use it, actually. Uh, I'll show the examples. Uh, on the next slides. So why would you use JScala maybe instead of JavaScript, maybe instead of Scala.js? Um, well, first is a light bandity or type safety. <laughs> um, what I usually mean by that uh, um, I include in, in, into this is actual uh, IDE support, which is quite important in modern large projects because um, I'm not considering uh, dynamic languages very serious for large projects because mainly because of lack of support of IDE because you, you have to have a decent navigation and refactoring possibilities in large projects, otherwise you're screwed. So it's IDE support. Uh, modularity, you can use uh, classes, traits, to modularize the code. Single language, uh, as Otto mentioned before, we would like to use single language, which most, well not most, but some JavaScript programmers do when they use Node for server side. And less boilerplate, of course. Uh, if you ever seen coffee script or even used it, uh, the main purpose of that language is to reduce boilerplate of JavaScript. So just how it can be used uh, for these purposes too. So let's take a look at the example. Um, the main difference of just how the uh, compared to Scala.js, that it does not require any runtime. Um, so we have this, I don't have a point, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. So we have this uh, thing, we 
which looks like a function, like a, a usual Scala function called JavaScript. This is actually a JScala macros, which takes a block of code and tries to convert it into a uh, JavaScript AST. If we pretty print this using this uh, string method, we'll get this JavaScript, which is quite straightforward. You can see that on the first slide we had uh, if expression, then we had a pattern matching and a call of print. So we get a ternary, uh, ternary expression in JavaScript because we know that if if it's are not expressions but statements in JavaScript for some weird reason. And we have a pattern matching converted into a switch. Uh, yeah, then we have a call of print. So it's very straightforward. So if you write, if there is a uh, simple way to convert Scala to JavaScript, or you have an intuition how it should be done, in most cases it's done that way. That means you have no boilerplate, as I said before, no runtime. And this can be used to produce, well, sometimes you need to generate um, JavaScript logic based on some conditions on server side. So uh, JSCala is uh, good for this kind of tasks. Because uh, otherwise you would uh, either concatenate strings or you'll create another JavaScript AST and we'll do a list programming on, on your own. So, what features does this color have? So we can define uh, variables, functions, and lambdas. Uh, ifs for uh, loops are supported. Uh, we have a limited support of pattern matching without guards, unfortunately, yet. Um, exceptions, try throw uh, methods are also supported. We have a limited, limited support of classes and traits and limited support of inheritance on the methods can be inherited. Also, we have a JS dynamic for dynamic programming, whatever. Whenever you have, uh, you want to just uh, call any method on a given object, supposing that you have it implemented somewhere in JavaScript library, it's similar to ScalaJS. So you can use this JS dynamic. I'll show you exa examples. And we have an injection, uh, which allows you to insert your server-side data into a generated uh, JavaScript. So uh, first of all, you can use it for manual AST transformations. So we can define uh, a variable called test um, and say it's going to be a map. We can use 2GS to create it. Or we can uh, do a list kind of programming and create those AST by yourselves. You can uh, concatenate those, insert. So we can build a quite complex logic using just manual ASTs. So we can see the results that we have a variable test which is an object and call of print. Okay. So let's take a look at more complex example. Um, let's say this code does not actually <laughs> make much sense, it's more like example of different features. Uh, so you can see that we create an array here. We can include a raw JavaScript using function include. Uh, and we can define this JS dynamic dollar sign 
which we can call any methods on and it's going to be translated uh, literally into this line Whoa. I don't have a point of story so let's see what's going to be generated quite straight, straightforward we have an every we have a raw JavaScript line included we have a simple for and this jQuery line just inserted literally so this uh, quite basic set of features allowed me to um, port JavaScript implementation of Tetris to Scala which then um, um, which included in this JavaScript macro produces JavaScript which is actually playable. So I have this um, one second. So basically what happens is I have this file which have this implementation of Tetris. It has a class representing a canvas, uh, statistics, bunch of methods defined and uh, a lot of logic to just take a look it, it gets compiled to JavaScript put it into a browser and it actually works So it's like 400 lines of code of Scala, which gets converted to JavaScript, which is actually which actually works uh, in browser, which was surprising even for me. Okay. So the next thing you can use uh, JScala is for sharing uh, server-side and client-side code. Um, it's not in this position when you can write very complex uh, logic, but for small things like validation, uh, you can share uh, server side and client side code using JSCala. Similar to ScalaJS, but without boiler type thing. So in this case, we're using um, annotations, macro annotations. So basically, you yeah, annotate um, a class which contains your logic which you want to share with this JavaScript implementation and um, this macro notation generates the JavaScript implementation of those methods uh, of the class greeter in this case so if we call this method hello from Scala from JVM is going to print hello Alex. And if we call this uh, JSON method, uh, or JS method, uh, we'll get an implementation of this greeter class 
uh, in JavaScript. We can evaluate it using Reno, for example, and we will have quite the same result. So this is what's going to be generated. And when we evaluate it, it's going to get the same result. So I was wondering what can be done uh, using this feature. I was um, willing to implement quite complex logic and share it on server side and uh, client side. So I implemented uh, AES encryption, which you should not use, but just for fun. So this is a Scala implementation of AES uh, encryption algorithms. You can see it's quite a lot of code, which uses a lot of um, you know shift bits, shifting, all that kind of stuff. And I wrote this play application. which is working like that. Uh, whatever I write in this text area is uh, gets encrypted using JavaScript generated from uh, Scala class. It gets uh, passed to a server side, encrypted, and then on the server side this message uh, gets decrypted using the Scala version of the same algorithm the same code. So whatever we write here, we get a bunch of uh, an array of integers, which is encrypted representation of this message. We send it, decrypt, and uh, server side returns message decrypt. And this looks like that. Also, as I mentioned before, we can do a, a small uh, validation shared bits using Jiscala. For example, let's take a look at sign up form. So we have this form, which uh, should be one of these fields should be validated. We say that we want username to be um, larger than three symbols. So we can write a Scala code annotated with JavaScript, and we will have a JavaScript we can use. So we have uh, the, same, the same code, which actually does not need, it does not allow me to send this form until I Make it uh, longer than it works. I just want to show you that I have a, the same code validating uh, this, uh, this field on a server side. JavaScript programming, you need to use a lot of libraries. JQuery, React, Angular, you name it. Uh, so it would be nice to have the ID support I mentioned before. So you need something to know. Uh, we need somehow to know all the methods, all the uh, data structures we have in those libraries. Uh, but Similar to the Scala.js, we can import uh, TypeScript annotated uh, uh, TypeScript annotation files for those libraries. I'm not sure 
did someone use TypeScript notations? No? So, uh, as you may know, Microsoft have uh, developed this TypeScript language, which should be a type of uh, JavaScript. And a lot of JavaScript libraries have uh, TypeScript files, which has we have a lot of type annotation, annotated functions for, for libraries. For example, for JavaScript, uh, for, for jQuery, um, they have this file, jQuery something TS, which contains all the methods, all the data structures in jQuery, so we can get a decent ID support. For example, um, let's take a look. So we can, using this TypeScript annotation, we can import the TypeScript file, for example, for Angular or for jQuery, in this example, and we'll get a support, ID support, for example, at, at plus, and more. Yeah, sorry, worked on my machine. <laughs> it's better. But it works, I assure you, sometimes. <laughs> By the way, uh, for for some reason, well, I know there is. Uh, unfortunately, this um, this feature works only in uh, uh, in Eclipse in Scala IDE uh, because they actually use a Scala presentation compiler to uh, roll out macro macros and macro annotations. Unfortunately, uh, IDEA has has its own kind of parser which does not support macros. It does not roll roll over macros. So in in idea it's gonna be just syntax errors. But, but it works anyway. Not the get words So, uh, basically, well, what's been said that um, IDEA has a support? Yeah, it's, it's an API. API for, for that. Ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. Maybe someday. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's go deeper. So in a nutshell, that's uh, that's all the features uh, we have. So we can share code. We can write Scala, which gets translated to JavaScript straightforward, which you can use to generate the logic on a server side. Uh, you can write validations. Also, I was supposed to complete this um, SBT plugin for Play, which unfortunately I haven't done. But I will on next week, which would allow you to write the JavaScript, uh, oh, well, Scala code, which gets translated to JavaScript into in this um, SBT pipeline. If you know, if you have you write Play applications, someone, so they have oh, so you know they have this um, built pipeline in SBT, which um, you know converts. Your coffee script, JavaScript, or do this GC or whatever steps you need to do. So one of those plugins is going to be this JScala plugin, which will convert uh, Scala to JavaScript. So you can include it into your play build pipeline easily. 
Um, mm -hmm. So, the cons of JSCALA. So, currently, and probably anyway, it will uh, support only a subset of Scala features as, as a language. Um, because it's quite a complicated task to translate all the possible um, trees, Scala trees, into JavaScript. Uh, it does not cover uh, the library, so it has a very limited support working with arrays, and that's it. So we can't use uh, Scala collections. One of the ideas of uh, uh, future development is to use any uh, external libraries like underscore or whatever is currently best uh, to convert Scala collections uh, methods to these underscore methods. Um, and of course, JSCALA uses experimental features. It's macros, they evolve, they change. Um, so you should use it with caution. Okay, the future feature development. I, I've been um, in this, you know, positive feedback loop when uh, I don't do much of uh, new development because no one asks me to, because no one uses it. And no one uses it because I don't do any development at this tool. So please, guys, join whoever interested in macros and JavaScript development using Scala. Just uh, add me on Skype or email me. We can we can build it. We can uh, make it better. One of the features I would like to implement is uh, AsynJS support, uh, which, if you, does anyone know what AsynJS is? A oh, few. Okay, so basically it's a tool uh, for making JavaScript code more performant by giving a JavaScript virtual machine hints about types. So basically, we can say that this is a array of integers, and then it gets much better performance. And in case of JSCALA, we know the types, so we can do these hints automatically, because guys in JavaScript have to do this manually. And we can do this automatically, which would be great. So if someone wants to implement this kind of thing, just, uh, just tell me. And uh, about the plugin, I already said it. It's going to be on the next week. So we can try it. Join, join. Um, so those are uh, contacts. If you want to try it, fork it, or make a pull request, uh, it's on the GitHub. That means I ask any questions. Thank you. Questions? Right, one second, the microphone. I have to use Scala Meta later for Scala Scala Meta. Are you going to use Scala Meta for ah. uh, Yes, yes, sure. Um, the I'm not, I'm not sure uh, on which state uh, the Scala Meta is. I'm currently using what's in, in, a, in a compiler currently. And we'll see. Oh, yes, sure, uh, one day. You said that the Scala supports the Scala. What happens when you write a so the question was, um, given that JSCALA only supports a subset of uh, Scala, what happens when you write something that's not supported? Well, actually it's a compile time error in most cases. 
messages they are ugly <laughs> most cases they they throw it with the um, AST Scala AST just for me for debugging in most cases what I did I just wrote um, code got this compilation error copied the tree inserted into Gscala <laughs> for it to be supported so currently it's not not cool so don't use it for production, or maybe use it and we'll get it better and production ready. No questions? Okay, thank you.